All right, let's get serious. <clears throat> this right here is a tomato. This right here, my friends, is a tomato plant. With a tomato plant, you can get a lot of tomatoes. And that's exactly, exactly the right analogy. That's exactly how you have to think about this excellent identity right here, the cosine of the difference of two angles. At first, you may think, well, how, what does that have to do with the tomato? Well, remember, there are four ways uh, you can prove identities, and uh, the four ways are, or, or not, there aren't four ways, these are four famous ways that we use, there might be others, but one of the ways that you can prove identities is by tweak, tweaking a known identity, and that right here, my friends, that's what makes this identity right here a tomato plant, because you're going to tweak it and get some tomatoes, and you're going to tweak it some more and get some more tomatoes, and you're going to keep tweaking it and tweaking it, as a matter of fact, the entire par right paragraph, all those 20 of those identities, no. they, all, they all come from this one right here, the mother tomato plant. You, that's why I called it the, um, that's why I called it Mota, the mother of them all. This right here is the mother of them all. With this one, you can prove every single one in this paragraph, and not just this paragraph, but that paragraph, and that paragraph, and that paragraph. They all come from this one. That is, this this one right here. If there was ever an identity that was like a tomato plant, this one's got to be it. And, and the key to it will be just a little tweak here and there. And every single time you tweak it, you'll get another and another and another and another identity. So, so talk is cheap. Let's do it. Uh, there, are, there are two things that we got, at least two things that are really, really important that we got to do. First of all is uh, learn how to tweak it so that you can get all the other famous ones in this paragraph. And then the next natural question is, well, why is that one true? We need to prove that one. We need to prove this one as well. And to prove that one, you have to start with something amazingly, amazingly creative. But we'll leave that, that's kind of like the dessert, we'll leave that for the end. Uh, let's get on with it and start tweaking so that we can prove and you can own every one of these identities uh, on the famous identity sheet. Every one of these you should own and feel comfortable with. Assuming that you know, assume that this one is true already. We'll prove it later on using some amazing, amazingly creative and brilliant idea. We'll prove that one. And and for now, let's see how, how will that one help you prove all the other ones. Uh, and the key is by just making small little tweaks. Um, for example, if this is an identity, then it's got to be true for all possible values of a and all possible values of b. Okay. Um, but by the way, it, a lot of people will do this naively. They'll say a uh, cosine of x minus cos minus y. Well, uh, they'll go like this. So oh, that's equal to cosine x minus cosine y. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. This identity is telling you exactly how to handle cosine of blah minus blah. And this is exactly what a beginner would do. Uh, this is totally, totally incorrect. Um, you, you should be cautious. And we had another section where, where we talked about this. Be careful, these these functions don't behave like numbers. That was just a little word of caution. Anyways, talk is cheap, let's do it. So if, if this is an identity that's true for all um, all possible values of A and B, then I can substitute anything I want for A and B. And make, make sure here we will prove. Suppose uh, it is known already. I'll show you the proof later, but for now let's, let's assume it's known. What would happen if you substitute? Here's the key, tweak key, uh, the key tweaking. Substitute a is equal to x, and then substitute b is equal to negative y. Think about that. A will be wherever you see a in here, you'll sub substitute x, and wherever you see b, you will substitute the quantity negative y, and see what happens. Then, then you'll have. Um, Cosine. Instead of a, you'll have x. You'll have a. Instead of a, you'll have x, and instead of b, here you'll have negative y. So you'll have negative negative y. That's that part right there, and that's equal to um, cosine x, cosine negative y, plus sine x, sine negative y. This is just the substitution, the tweaking. And and then and then what will happen? Well, let's let's clean it up here. This will tell you that uh, cosine um, 
x plus y, that's how that cleans up. It's x minus minus y, so that's the same thing as x plus y. Um, and that's going to be equal to, let me see if I can zoom in there just a little bit. All right. Um, that's going to be equal to uh, cosine x. And then we talked about this before. Cosine is an even function. It doesn't care if your angle is positive or negative. So cosine doesn't care that this is a negative y. Cosine will just look at it as the same as a cosine y. You get the same ratio. Uh, that, that was a previous identity. And then same, similar story here. <clears throat> Sine, we, we showed earlier that it's an odd function. So it does care whether the angle is positive or negative. If, I, if it's negative, you, you could pull that negative outside here and that can come out here. And really, we can make this a minus, a minus uh, sine x, uh, sine y, uh, by using the fact that the sine is an odd function and pulling this negative all the way out here. And that, my friends, that's another identity. That's a tomato that came from tomato. the tomato plant. Okay, the mother of them all. Look at the look at the uh, identity sheet. This is the mother of them all, cosine a minus b. And from that one, we just arrived. The one with a plus. Um, let me zoom you in there. This one is the one we got to prove. Put a little star on that one. That's the dessert. We'll prove it at the end. But from this one, we tweaked it and we got this one. Check. And, and you may wonder, all right, how can we get the sine one? This one seems to have nothing to do with with sine. And so you say, all right, maybe I can I can tweak the cosine into and turn it into a sine. And then you think, well, what's the difference between a sine and a cosine? Well, somebody went around, they put a co on the cosine, and that's that's what they turned the sine to a cosine. And that gets your brain thinking in the right direction. Uh, in fact, uh, we did this earlier as well. We had an entire paragraph on uh, the co-function identities. This is how the sine and the cosine are related. One, you, use, you take the complementary angle, and by doing that, you can change a sine into a cosine. That will be the idea that we will use, okay? So, so the one I'm going to use is this one right here that, that tells me how to turn a uh, a sine into a cosine. And instead of having theta, if you just subtract 90 degrees, that turns into a sine theta. So that will tell you exactly what the right substitution should be. I'm going to make uh, x. I'm going to leave x alone. So I'll make uh, maybe I'm going to substitute here. Uh, we will substitute x equals a. And we will substitute y equals uh, b minus 90 degrees. Okay, that's going to give us a complementary angle, and then and then we'll we'll be in business. Um, so in fact, it'll give us a negative of a complementary angle, but it'll serve the right purpose. That wherever you see x, we replace it with a. Wherever you see y, we replace it with this quantity. That will give us the following: cosine of uh, a plus B minus 90 degrees okay, uh, is equal to cosine of A. We got a restless guess here. Uh, and that will give us cosine of uh, B minus 90 degrees minus uh, sine of A. And sine of uh, b minus 90 degrees. That, and then, and then I'm going to use this this famous identity that says that on the left hand side. Look at that. This one says that if I have cosine of blah minus 90 degrees, that's what I have here. Cosine of blah minus 90 degrees, that turns into sine of blah, right? Cosine of a house. Minus 90 degrees is sine of a house. So cosine of a house minus 90 degrees would be sine of a house. So that's that's what the left hand side is using the um, co-function identities. And then on the right hand side, uh, this one will be the same thing as cosine A. Uh oh, I got it here. Cosine of B minus 90 degrees. Well, I'll use exactly exactly the same identity. Cosine of theta minus 90 degrees is the same thing as sine of theta, so cosine of b minus 90 degrees will be the same thing as uh, sine of b. And that takes care of that. Minus, this is uh, sine a, there's nothing to do there. 
What about this? Sine of B minus 90 degrees. How do you handle uh, that? Um, sine of B, that would be this one right here. Sine of blah minus 90 degrees. Every time you've got sine of blah minus 90 degrees, what does that give you? That gives you a negative cosine of blah. That's this one right here. So that's what exactly what I've got here. See, cosine of B minus 90, that looks exactly, sorry, sine of B minus 90, that looks exactly the same as sine of something minus 90. That's going to give me negative cosine of that something. So this one right here will be a negative cosine B. And then the negative here times the negative there will give you a positive, and so you end up with sine of A plus B is equal to cosine of A, sine of B, plus sine of A, cosine B. And that, my friends, that's another tomato from the tomato plant. That's another really, really famous, famous identity. That, that's this one right here. Let's check it to make sure we got it right. Sine of A plus B, sine of A plus B, is equal to sine of A cosine B, uh, sine of A cosine B, plus cosine A sine A, cosine A sine B, sorry. They're, they're backwards, but it is exactly the same identity that I have here, sine of A plus B. And look what, how we did it. We took the original one, the mother of them all, we tweaked it a little bit by making substitutions, and we got another one on that paragraph. We took that one and tweaked it a little bit, and then we got another one on that paragraph. And all of a sudden now we've got, uh, you know, three three done here. Well, the, the first one I still got to do, but from that one we got we drive this one, from that one we drive that one. It's easier to imagine how from that one you could drive that one, and maybe I'll do one of these. And then we got to come back and prove the mother of them all. That one, we will, it will require a um, an amazingly creative idea, uh, so, so that we'll finish off with that one. But, but maybe we can tackle one more of these from the paragraph. Maybe we'll do one of the tangent ones. Okay? Okay, let's prove this one. Um, now, you, sh you should know that these things go in order. Anytime you're trying to prove any one of these identities, you can use anything that you've already proven up to that point. You just can't use that identity of itself or things from the future. So, so to prove this one, I can prove anything that, that I've already proven, or that I assume I've already proven. Anything that comes on the list before this. The, the, the idea here, again, let's, let's look at the options. Either work on each side, tweak a known identity, look at the graph, start with something amazingly brilliant and creative. I'm going to go with working on each side separately. Now, it is usually the case that you should work on the more complicated side and make it look simple. Every once in a while, there's an exception. Like this one that says, hey, maybe we should try to look, take the simple side and look, make it look complicated. Uh, let's, let's try that. So the first strat part of the strategy is to um, abandon the idea that they're equal and try to check it. Check that they're equal. Uh, so don't assume it. Check it. Tangent, I know that that's equal to sine of A plus B all over cosine of A plus B. And uh, the reason I know that is because that, that was one of the identities that came way before. That was one of the original ones. I said tangent is the same thing as a sine over a cosine, right there. And then you think to yourself, hey, what about sine of A plus B? Well, we just got done proving that one, so I, I know how to expand this one. And, and I know how to expand cosine. That was the second one. We, these are the two that we've proven from the mother of them all. So, uh, I'll, I'll just look at here and I'll copy si what happens when I have sine of A plus B. And I'll have a sine of A. Uh, cosine B, and then I'll have plus uh, cosine A, uh, sine of B, and that whole thing, that's the numerator. And I gotta divide that by, um, I gotta divide that by the denominator, which is cosine of A plus B. So for cosine of A plus B, again, I'm gonna be looking here. Cosine of A plus B is equal to this whole thing. So it's equal to, um, Cosine of A, cosine of B minus sine of A, sine of B. And you think, whoa, now you've done it. Now you've really done it because it looks nothing like the right side. Well, let's think about this carefully. This looks like that and that looks like that. At least they both look like a fraction. So we're almost there. <laughs> Not really. At least they look like a fraction. That's maybe a good thing, but it still looks like a very, very different fraction. Let's look at it. It looks like a fraction, and on, on the right-hand side, this one's got the sum of two things. 
this one does too, so that's a good thing. On the bottom, this one's got the difference of two things. This one's got the difference of two things, so that's another good thing. And you think to yourself, well, how can I make the look, fraction look like that? And you think, well, I need a one on this part of the spot. I need a one on that spot for starters. So you think to yourself, how can I get a one on this spot legally? And you can think and think and think. Let's borrow the blue one. And, and then you think, well, one possibility would be to multiply top and bottom by one over uh, cosine A, uh, cosine B. And the reason that for that is because if you were to multiply that times that, that would give you the one that we need on this spot right here. Uh, and that might be a starting point. And so you you can't just legally multiply the bottom by something. You, you to make it um, legal, uh, you multiply the top by the same thing. One over cosine a, uh, cosine b. So so what's going to happen when you do that? Again, let's zoom in here. Is every one of these is going to get divided by cosine a, cosine b? Every one of them. All right, so this is what happens when we divide every single term by cosine a, cosine b. I divided everything on the top by it and everything on the bottom by it. And the whole point was to get that one that's, that's popping up right there. I needed this thing to be a one. So, so when that cleans up, uh, that cleans up nicely, this cleans up into a one for sure. That's how we cooked up that guy right there too. So that that would be a one. And then you have to try to think about what is the rest of this stuff clean into, clean up into. So this piece right here would be sine a, cosine a. This is famous, sine a, cosine a, that goes back to um, one of the, the, the definitions. Um, every time you have a sine a over cosine a, that's the same thing as a tangent a. So this would be a tangent a, and then you have a sine b, cosine b. That turns into a tangent b. That's the bottom. And then on the top here, you have a sine a over a cosine a and a cosine b over a cosine b. Well, cosine b over cosine b, these ones cancel. And all you get is a sine over cosine of a, so that gives you tangent a. And then here, you have a cosine a over cosine a, that cancels. And all you have is a sine b over cosine b. And that gives you plus uh, tangent b. And let's see. Whoa, 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 whoa. And that, my friends, um, that's why they pay me. Look at that. Now you've now we've done it. it. This we've proven that both sides are equivalent by taking this one, rewriting it as a sine over cosine, dividing by something good to make that a one, and everything cleaned up perfectly into exactly what we needed it to be. And that proves it. That proves this one right here. Uh, the tangent of a plus b is equal to that. So you can uh, put a little check mark on this one. Um, so so far uh, I've. I've we stated the, the mother of them all, we didn't prove it yet, but using it we tweaked it to get that one, we tweaked that one to get that one, and then we proved this one using the other things we had we had proven already. You, my friends, you should be able to finish everything and own it, uh, prove every single one of these and say, hey, I know exactly why each of them is true. There's one thing left to do, and one thing only, and that is explain exactly why this one is true, cosine of a minus b, is equal to that. That's the mother of them all. Everything comes from the mother of all. That's the biggest tomato plant in the world. You get all the tomatoes out of it. So that's the last thing that we got to do is we got to prove the mother of them all. Okay, let me put this on pause and uh, recharge the batteries here for just a second.